Next up, a very special guest from up north, Ken Pulse. Ken, last time we talked with us, Ken Pulse of the Excel Guru dot CA. Uh, last time we talked to you, you were a uh, hardworking CIO FO slash guy, I think, up at a up there in Canada at a resort. What did the FO stand for? Uh, I don't know. Because <laughs> I don't know either. I'm like, man, that doesn't sound nice. <laughs> Sounds good. F financial <laughs> officer, or something like that. Uh, but since then, it seems like all kinds of stuff has been coming out from you. You know, um, that you know, you have a new website, Excel Training dot Query, and this showed up this week. Ooh, from right. Mr. Ken Pulse and Miguel Escobar. So, Ken, what have you been up to? It seems like you've been up to a lot. Would you mind getting everybody kind of up to speed since the last time we talked with you? Sure. Okay. So, uh, so I'm an accountant, and uh, I, just for anybody that isn't aware of it, the big day in Canada for accountants is always April 30th. That's tax deadline due date. So um, that happened to be the day that I gave my notice for, uh, for the full-time job that I was working because I figured what better day for an accountant to give their notice for um, so yeah, I was working as the controller and director of IT uh, for a company called Fairwinds. We were a big golf course, marina, and, and uh, real estate development, food and beverage, all kinds of different things there. And I decided that, you know what, after 10 years of, uh, of building Excel grew up and, uh, and sort of letting it grow organically and grand grandly, uh, I thought it was time to, uh, to hang out the hat and say, you know what, I'm, I'm done with the, uh, the full-time gig. I'm going to go try, uh, try working for myself and see how that works. So. Um, and it's been good so far, I have to say. It, uh, oddly, um, I don't think you're supposed to be more relaxed when you start your own business, but I certainly feel <laughs> that way. Um, it's, uh, it's been kind of neat. We've had a lot of different things that have come out. I'm doing a lot of teaching uh, courses now. Um, I've uh, written a couple of, uh, of textbook chapters. I've done a lot of video training for people. And I wrote a book, which was kind of cool. And uh, yeah, we, we started, uh, Miguel, Escobar and I, uh, Miguel Escobar and I started this uh, powerquery.training project where we actually run a, um, a, an online training workshop and it's live online training so we're both there hosting this thing, it's not, uh, not recorded in advance and we actually lead people through uh, two uh, five hour days of training working with Power Query technology to do a whole bunch of things, clean up a lot of different data files and we go from somebody who's never used it before up to some pretty cutting edge, pretty awesome techniques that involve a deep dive into the coding language behind it. And then we follow that up uh, in, a, well, it has been a week later. We're going to move that to two weeks later to give people more time to practice with a Q&A session where people actually get to submit their own questions and their own problems that they're having as they try and use Power Query, and we answer those live. And then when it's all done, they've, uh, they've got full recorded video of the whole session. They get a, a copy, a, a digital copy of, of this fantastic book here. Um, and uh, it's it we've had really good feedback with it. It's worked out really well. So, quite a few different things going. It's definitely no rest. Uh, I say that. So, so go ahead, Jordan. So for our um, audience members out there who aren't necessarily uh, familiar with Power Query, can you give us just a small overview? And also, can you tell us about its new name in Excel 2016? Oh, do I have to? I, I kind of like the term Power Query. So let me start, sum up Power Query in, in two words. Um, those words are freaking awesome. Okay, that, that pretty much describes the product right there. So uh, if, if you've ever done any kind of manual cleanup work where you're, say, importing a text file or you're importing data from an Excel file and you have it, it's not in a format that you really can use. It might have extra rows in between that you have to clean up or it's got garbage data and it's got to be cleaned up. Uh, Power Query allows you in many instances to actually collect that data, clean it up faster than you can with just regular old Excel, but then the real bonus is that next month when you got to go do that whole job again, you just click the refresh button and it just does it on the new file, which is fantastic. So it takes a lot of wasted time and effort of cleaning data and, and sanitizing it, getting it into a good format and, and, and uh, turns that into when you first write it an investment in time that you can use over and over again so you can actually now divert your efforts from... Um, you know, from doing grunt work to actually where you can use your brain to do stuff that's actually exciting and, and you know, what you're probably really being paid to do. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Um, hmm, the new name, yeah. So so Power Query came out as a, uh, originally had a code name called Data Explorer, and then it came out and it was rebranded to Power Query, which came out with Excel 2010 and 2013. It was a free download that you can add and, and snap into your Excel. So 
This is why everybody should have this because it was free to download right off the bat and it's so awesome. And then in Excel 2016, I guess the uh, the team decided that this thing was so fantastic they went and they integrated it into the product natively. But they were a little concerned that with the name Power um, being in front of it, uh, that it might scare people away from it. So they've actually changed it now and just sort of rolled it all under one tab on the data ribbon, which is called Get and Transform. So it, it's kind of had its name, unfortunately, a bit neutered, if you like. Um, you know, I, I, I love the name Power Query because I think that's representative of what it does. And, uh, you know, it is a powerful language to go and query data. And it's so easy to use. It's insane. Uh, so I, I'm not a big fan of the decision. But you know what? As long as it's in the product, I'll, I'll, I'll eventually get over it. Eventually. <laughs> Ken, do you have any insight as to why it was just Power Query and not any of the other Power BI uh, names that were changed? Or maybe maybe Microsoft is planning to change all the other Power, you know, well, power Pivot and all the other ones. No, I, I can't why, say that I have any. Why well, specifically that? Let me let me give you this one then. Um, Power Map yeah. is now 3D Maps. Mm. They've changed uh. the name on that one. It's dropped the power term. Um, <laughs> oh, look out, Jordan! You're going to get keyboard uh, on your forehead. No, I know, I know. Um, the uh, Power Pivot is still Power Pivot, as far as I know. Right. There's no plans to change it, but they don't. I mean, they don't share all those plans with us in advance. And uh, even if they did, I probably wouldn't be allowed to talk about it. Uh, Power View, when you go into Excel 2016, um, is no longer on the ribbon by default. It's actually hidden away um, in one of those little commands that, uh, you know, like the developer tab where you actually have to show it. Yeah. Uh, you got to do the same thing with Power View. So mm -hmm. I don't know 100% what's going on there. It's, um, it, it's changing a little bit. So I, I would say Power Pivot is the only obvious power that we're going to have for a while. But uh, again, you know, as long as the technology is still there, we'll get used to that, um, whether we agree with the decision or not. Gotcha. So, uh, Ken, in, in your book, M is for Data Monkey, the Excel Pro's <laughs> Definitive Guide to Power Query by Ken Paulson, Miguel Escobar. In the table of contents, you have everything from aggregating Excel worksheets to importing from databases, defining data tops, types, um, automating and refreshing and all that sort of stuff. Would you mind talking a little bit about the book here? And, and whenever someone gets this, you know, what, what could they expect from this? Um, you know, when we uh, when we sat down and we, and we designed the book, uh, Miguel and I worked really hard to try and figure out what is the most logical way to actually teach somebody to use the software and uh, what's the, the best way as we're teaching to help you know, keep layering things on so that it made a natural progression as to how you would actually use this tool. Um, so what are you going to find in there? Uh, you're going to find a whole bunch of stuff that's incredibly useful. Um, we, we made a huge effort in here to go through and actually source real life examples. Um, I, about 90% of the data that's in this book and the, and the data files that you download were sourced from um, real world problems and just cleaned up a little bit to make the, uh, the you know, to protect the innocent, if you will. Um, the only uh, exception to that, but this has got a different hook to it that I think is really important, is we do at one point use the AdventureWorks database, which is sort of Microsoft standard. Here's how we do things uh, with, with databases. Um, it's their, their sort of demo. But what we did with that one is we said, you know, not all users um, of Excel actually have a good relationship with their IT department or have the ability to go and connect to a full-on SQL Server database. So what we ended up doing is we actually ended up hosting a, a SQL database in Windows Azure. And if you buy the book, you actually get the credentials to log on to that database so that you can connect to a web-hosted database that is running SQL Server, pull data in, and actually practice on it, even if you don't have access to a database like that at work. So that was uh, that was kind of a cool thing. I mean, it's obviously a big job to build the database. It's a big job to get all these examples, but we thought that was really important to do. So we sort of start the journey easy, and uh, and we go through and we look at um, you know some some basic things that some users might want to do as far as appending data and and how does Power Query work with that, um, and then we sort of start you know building it up more and more. Uh, one of the things that I think was really interesting is that as we actually went through the technical editing process, we flipped where one of our chapters actually was. I had something about mm, around chapter six, and my technical editor was in the UK. And the very first thing that happened is he opened up his file and opened it up, and all the dates came in wrong. 
And we went, oh man, this is because you know, I I leave I, I live so close to the U.S. border that I leave my date settings in the uh, in the month day year format like you guys use. But in mm -hmm. the U.K., of course, it's day month year. So as soon as he got all my data, I pulled it over and he went, this doesn't work, Ken. So we ended up having to take this chapter, move it all the way up to chapter number two to make sure we cover that off right off the bat. So this is the kind of stuff that we did as we were going through to try and make sure that um, when people were sort of following along in this guided journey that things made sense and they and that we could try and deal with any of those kind of errors that were coming up as, as soon as we possibly could. So I'm real proud of this. i got to tell you, I mean, this is the second book that I've written. And, I mean, I, I was actually just out doing a course the other day, and I, I sell my first book as Bedtime Reading for Insomniacs. Um, perfect gift for the insomniac on your list for Christmas, but you know this particular book here, I think, is going to be really impactful to a lot of people. I'm I'm really proud of what's going on in there, and I think that um, you know you're going to find if uh, if you grab this book that it'll have a huge huge impact on the way you do things. So far, um, every time that I've run into a user who's dealing with very common problems that that we see all the time, and actually, you know, um, Oz uh, used to be on the show here. I mean, he he emailed me the other day and said, "Hey, Ken, I'm having a problem doing this." I said, "Dude, you got to read chapter 23, six pages. It will change your life." <laughs> and he emailed me back, and you know, you know, Oz, right? Hot damn, it works. Well, of course it does, man. I'm telling you. So, you know, but it's good. I mean, we we uh, we're able to build these things in that for the common problems that face a lot of people. So. That was Great. a that was a excellent excellent Oz impersonation there. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> it was almost like I, Oz was back on the show. It know? was written in capital letters yes. and everything, man. I'm telling you, <laughs> all caps. Oh yeah. So sure. uh, so yeah. So the name of the book is M is for Data Monkey. So for those unfamiliar with Power Query slash Get and Transform, can you tell us about M? And also, um, you know, if uh, should should we be scared of M? I mean, I know the answer is no, but it is a new thing in Excel. So you know, how how do people approach it? How should can't we approach be scared it? Of it, man? I I put a really cute monkey on the cover. No, it's a great it's a great cover, <laughs> great title um, too. I, we, we actually had fun with that, actually, that when we sort of bantered it around. So M, uh, the reason it's called M is for Data Monkey is because M is the programming language inside Power Query, and. Uh, and the reason why we didn't say M is the programming language inside Power Query is because you know, nobody would buy the book if we did that. So um, one of the things that uh, that was actually interesting, when we first started off with M is for Data Monkey, I mean, the intent behind the book was, you know, let's go and let's go and teach people how to actually program in this fantastic language. And it became really clear um, as we were going through this that, you know what, um, there's so many things that can be done through the user interface without ever having to get to that language that mm -hmm. we wanted to really demonstrate a lot of that first. So um, I would say probably about the first, uh, man, two-thirds of the book is all user interface transformations of you know how to get your data, how to transform it and whatnot. But once you actually start to unravel the language itself and start to understand it, you can amp it up. It's kind of like using Excel and then adding VBA to the mix. You can use Excel forever without ever using VBA and you're not going to feel that there's any loss there. But once you start to to understand VBA and start to understand what it can do for you, it really adds a whole nother dimension to your to your business analytics game. The same is true with M, um, M as a programming language. Now, uh, just to circle on this one, um, it was called M, I think, because A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, you know, were all taken. So <laughs> they came up with this one. Uh, M stands for manipulate as well. I mean, this is what this language is all about, is manipulating data. Um, it's kind of a hard term to search for, though. When you put M into Google, you come back with lots of results. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is one of the things where I think that Power Query as a definitive name was a really good thing because at least then you could actually hit on a term. Get and transform is also a little agnostic that way. It's kind of funny. But um, you know, back to the to the actual language itself. I mean, we sort of layered through all this user interface transformation before we finally get to um, to where we start actually opening up M as a language and M. It starts kind of nice and simple with just writing some formulas. I mean, that is M, kind of like DAX and Power Pivot looks like Excel formulas. M has some differences and some similarities, so we go through those, and we actually have a chapter that goes through and compares and contrasts Excel text formulas versus the Power Query version, because some of them are similar, some of them are incredibly different. Um, and then once we do that, uh, we actually show you some conditional logic, how to do if-then tests, because that's really weird. Um, 
they actually spell it out in Power Query. You actually type equals if, and then you do your test, and then you actually type in T-H-E-N instead of putting in a comma. It's really weird. Um, but we go through those things, and then we have an entire deep dive into the actual language itself, and, and then we start exploring how we can use that in different places to really amp up the game. So it, it kind of layers on itself. I mean, if somebody were to read the first two-thirds of the book, they're going to get a ton of stuff out of it if they never go into the M chapters at all. If they're willing to invest there, Holy cow, man, I'll tell you. I mean, some of the stuff there, you want to build a portable solution, you can email to anybody on the planet and it'll just work, you can totally do it if you learn just a little bit, which is kind of cool. Cool. Awesome. So, Ken, how are you seeing, uh, in general, end-user adoption of, of Power Query? Is it, or, excuse me, get and transform? <laughs> similar to Power, because I, I, I'm still shocked at how... It, it seemed to take a long time for people to even hear of Power Pivot. And I still go around. I meet a lot of people in, uh, in the trainings that I do and everything, and 90% of the time, and maybe we're all just lame in L.A., nobody, still nobody's heard of it. Why do you think no, that? Uh, awareness is a big problem. And, um, I, I mean, I don't know how you change that. I, I certainly don't think changing the wording to get and transform is the answer to that personally. Um, mm -hmm. I, I can tell you that every time I go and teach a class today, uh, I end off with 20 minutes going, okay, you know what, I'm going to pack your head full of information and now I need to switch your gears and I need to show you where the future is going and you need to see mm -hmm. this. And I can tell you, I mean, I teach to a lot of accountants and every time I teach a course and I show Power Query, mm -hmm. everybody falls off their chair. They're just blown mm -hmm. away. And, you know, my, my usual ending line is that I don't care if you take the course from me, but go take it from somebody. You have to learn about this. It's going to change your life. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Power Pivot uh, had a very slow adoption curve, absolutely, um, and it still does. I mean, I run into two people today who still haven't even heard of it. Um, mm -hmm. The same with Power Query, but, you know, I think Power Query will eclipse Power Pivot in terms of adoption because I think it's mm -hmm. much more accessible to end users. Mm -hmm. The user interface is a lot more point and click, and, and uh, it, it's actually got one of the best user interfaces I've seen um, in, in a product in quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, where power pivot is more difficult. I mean, it's not hard, it's just different and more difficult to wrap your head around than what's actually happening with Power Query. Um, you know, I'm an evangelist and I talk about it all the time. I blog about it every single week on my website, you know, with the different things that we can do here. I, I truly think it's a massive game changer. Everybody that I've had in my classes um, leaves excited about it because it, you know, I mean, it sells itself when you see what it can do. But yeah, adoption is still a challenge. I mean, and, and awareness is the biggest problem. That's the biggest piece in there. The second part is getting IT to allow you to install it, right? That's the, the next piece there. But uh, right. 